And we are back with Stacey Ann and Dr. Natasha. This has been a great, powerful conversation that we are having about being a black woman and the history of the stigma around mental health and re really how mental health struggles keep you stuck and keep you opting into a life of more and more struggle. And so I always close out, there's not a single guest that I've had on here that we haven't talked about joy because I do believe that there's gotta be a happy ending somewhere. <laughs> you can't just leave it as struggle is hard. Let's, let's not do it anymore. Have a good day, everyone. And that I want black women to see joy and to see it looks different on every person. There's no one, joy is not like, uh, one prescription of way to be that way, but I always like hearing from people how they discover joy and what brings them joy. And so for I'm going to leave it pretty open ended for you all to do that. And I'll start with Stacey Ann this time. What brings you joy and how do you center joy in your life? Oh, what a great question. I just love joy, love being joyous. Um, So I because I've been at a stage in my life where I was suicidal and I was struggled with depression, I celebrate everything. Like I, right after this podcast, I'm I'm gonna go celebrate. So this episode, I'm gonna go celebrate. I'm probably gonna buy myself uh, an ice cap from Tim Hortons. If you're from Canada, you know, or we have it in we have it in the states too, and just celebrate. I celebrate everything. Maybe it's also the Leo in me. I, I, those are my moments of joy that no one can take from me. I, I take lots of pictures. It creates memories. Of course, I live in the moment, but I like to take pictures as well because that is a form of joy. I can look back. I have so many pictures of, of going down to Jamaica, going back to Jamaica. I don't have any pictures of myself until I was seven because my parents just didn't take any pictures. So I also make it a habit of taking pictures all the time. And so I look back. I was looking through my album the other day and just feeling a sense of joy. You know, I um. I love to sleep. I'm one of those persons that naps. I am a napper. I it's very important for me. I I will tell you how important it is. If I have a choice between eating a plate of rice and peas and oxtail and taking a nap, I guarantee you I'm gonna take the nap, Natasha. I am going to take the nap. Napping is so important to me. There is something that revives me after a nap. Plus, I I'm I'm a I'm a I don't want to say I'm a vivid dreamer. I get dreams that are just very beautiful and i find like my dreams on a spiritual level that's how my ancestors talk to me so i i just love taking a nice half an hour nap 20 minute nap whatever it is it just gets me revived and then i can eat the oxtail if someone hasn't eaten it um what else do i do i i love listening to dance all music i know i know there's something about dance all music I remember I had a question like if you were on a deserted island and you had one song to listen to for the rest of the time that you're there, what song would that be? And I'm like, you know what? Ting a ling a ling by Shabba Ranks. I just, I just, I could listen to that song over and over again. I just love dance hall. It brings me joy. I think one of the defining moments of me knowing joy is when I, I, I started switching my perspective off strength. You know, as a black woman, strength is something that we look at as like how much I can carry. I want to carry this. I want to take this load on. I can do this. You know, this is my strength. But when I told myself that, no, strength is not how much I can carry. It's what I choose to put down. That is my strength is putting it down. Then my joy um, started reviving and started coming up. So those are moments that I that I take for joy. Oh, and I have a four year old, too. I have a four year old daughter and we dress up all the time she loves when we play um when we do matchy matchy outfits and our match natasha you've seen our pictures our outfits are like fire and you know we go brunch once a month we go to brunch and it's very fancy and i just love giving my daughter a soft life letting her experience what a soft life is and 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 teaching her about her emotions and how to tap into her emotions and you know you know taking the, the breathing out for four, or taking deep breaths and stuff like that. Things like that bring me joy. Being, being around my family, laughter, um, watching, and I'll wrap it up, watching, watching reality TV. There's two reality shows that I watch. Two, Real Housewives of Atlanta and Love is Blind. And I just watched them. I feel so much joy. <laughs> and I'm like, you're drama, not mine. I'm joking. Oh um, my God, that's, that's what brings me joy. <laughs> I love that. That's such a beautiful, that was such a wonderful, we went on the experience with you. Like we literally got the joy, we caught the joy 
as you were explaining all of the things that you love. Like, it's very clear that that does bring you joy. Like, I, I don't even watch Real Housewives of Atlanta, but I'm like, I'm with you. I'm like, okay, let's let's hear about the joy that this is bringing Stacey Ann. This is, this is something. I love that. How about for you, Dr. Natasha? I'm here just giggling away because Stacey Ann is just making me laugh. I love it. But, you know, sister, listen. I, I see your joy and I'm like, I'm in all for it. So I, I absolutely love it. Um, for me, um, I think my joy started with a sense of diving into my faith. Um, I've been raised as a Christian, um, you know, different denominations over, over my years. But I think in my struggle, I had, I ended up having a closer relationship to God because there's a difference between religion and relationship. Um, so I dived into a relationship with God and that is where my true joy came in because then I started walking in whom I really was, period, end of discussion. So um, so that, that was, that's the foundation that has been set and I, that's where I start middle and end of my day. Um, it's that, you know, talking to God, like, you no, know, Jesus, what, what's going on now? How do I figure this out? You know, I, I talk to him like it's nobody's business. So that, so my days always centered that way. But in the midst of that is where I sense pure joy, because what, what I've noticed is, is that joy for me is also equated with peace. I've had this now sense of peace where I walk unapologetically, like nobody can tell me what a black woman is supposed to be, what you're supposed to listen to, what you're supposed to eat, what are you supposed to wear? Because that's always been the dialogue, you know, black women are, and then here's the criteria of being a black woman. You're supposed to talk a certain way, wear certain clothes, um, you know, act in a certain way, listen to certain types of music. And when I let go of all that and said, I'm just going to be unapologetically myself, so it's, and the thing is, is, is remove the people who try to, to edit you because they're sitting there because they don't feel comfortable in their own skin, black man, black woman, or whatever. So what they try to do is to edit you to make themselves feel comfortable. And when I got to the space where I'm like, I am not responsible for your comfort, discomfort, or lack thereof, that's where my joy ensued. And it's either you fall to the wayside or you can follow me on this joy journey. So for me, joy is, you know, eating at the best restaurants, you know, and I love all types of food. So that's the thing. So I'll, you know, I'll go to the Michelin star restaurant one day. And then the other time I'll be at, you know, the mom and pops West Indian restaurant. That's why when I laughed when Stacey Ann said sleep or oxtail and rice and peas, no brethren, I am sorry. The oxtail and rice and peas have to go on first before, <laughs> before the rest. I love my stomach so much. Um, anyone who knows me well enough knows that I'm a wine connoisseur. Um, I love wine. I love going to wineries. I love the history of how it is made and, and sort of the science behind it. So I love that. But then more, more than that, I just love, you know, um, going to different parts of the world and, and um, collecting different bottles of wine from those countries, those regions. And the other thing that brings me a lot of joy is travel. I love to travel. Uh, I Once I, I uh, had my separation and divorce, I went on my first solo travel um, and I did a black yachting experience. So I said, I'm gone. I'm going by myself and and I'm out. So it's just doing those things where, you know, you know, those are the things that bring me joy. And then other than that, I've always been a family person. I love having my family around me. I've always hosted or had my family around. So that was always a, a thing for me, but even more so after I removed the people out of my life that were toxic and they needed to deal with themselves, the jokes, the camaraderie, the, the, you know, the love that I have. For, like I have a cousin who, you know, she needs to be a stand-up comedian because we're literally rolling on the floor anytime we're getting together because we just have so much joy. Even in our, we'll talk about our struggles, but then it's the way that she delivers a punchline where we're on the floor. So it's that laugh out loud, belly laugh, you know, keeling over, you know, kind of laugh, have to walk away because if you, you're just laughing so hard, kind of laugh. 
that is what brings me joy. So it's all of those things in combination that I that I love that bring me joy, but then that joy also brings an unapologetic peace that I that that I mean, you know, parts of me wishes I had it a little sooner because I think I had aspects of it, but now they're all coming together. And that peace, again, it's, it's peace that surpasses understanding for people that, you know, have you know, read, read their Bible scriptures, but that peace, it's it's priceless, absolutely priceless. What a beautiful list from both of you. I love that. And you all have heard a list of different things that both of you are doing, but two kind of themes to both of your list. It, it anchored in with you, Stacey Ann, you said you learn, you redefine what strength was, and that was linked to joy for you. And you realize that it's not how much you pick up, it's actually what you choose to put down. And it ties in with your rest, your belief in centering rest and the napping that you are apparently doing way more and better than I'm doing in my life. But <laughs> all of that goes together, that it was in this redefinition that you unlocked joy. And for you, Dr. Natasha, it was understanding the link between joy and peace and being unapologetic about who you were and having that unapologetic kind of peace that comes, that when you centered peace, joy unlocked and for you that center of peace was your faith and that allowed you to access that peace which allowed you to access joy but it's out of those kind of themes that you begin to see that it may look different on everyone right how what people love to do or don't love to do is their own thing but when you pursue peace and when you redefine strength those are the keys to which you all have unlocked joy which i think is so beautiful and well said to our audience in closing, I just want to ask you, where can we connect with you? Because this has been a great conversation and I'm sure more people will want to, to chat. So we'll start with Stacey and how we can connect with you. And then we'll just immediately go into you, Dr. Natasha, and how we can connect. Okay, yeah, sure. You can connect with me on social media. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram mostly. So it's Stacey Ann Buchanan. There's no E in the Stacey, so S-T-A-C-Y hyphen A-N-N. You can also connect with me over on the Blind Stigma page, um, or you can you can find the Blind Stigma online, blindstigma.com. You can even put in a Blind Stigma on YouTube, and you can watch our documentary. Um, it's it's I mean, Canadian history, so definitely you want to go out and you want to watch it. Um, and maybe the, here is where I can plug something. So I have been working on a book. It is finished. It is published. I'm now a published author. I won't be sharing more. I'll, I'll be sharing more um, in the coming weeks or next week per se, but um, it's there. It's open. You can find it on Amazon. It is called Good For You, 114 Mindful Practice Every Woman Can Adopt for a More Harmonious Life. And that's it for me. <laughs> Awesome. Congratulations, Stacey. I, I, Stacey Ann, I, I, I've said this before, but I have to say it again. I, I'm so, so proud of you. Um, where you can find me. So uh, you can check me, first of all, on my website. It's www.drnatashawilliams.com, um, where I have an online store and resources, as well as a blog and, and a lot of different things, resources. So you can check me out there. Um, as well, I'm on social media as well. So I'm on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter and TikTok. So you can check me out and all of the hashtags will be, well, will be uh, Dr. Natasha Williams. Uh, Twitter will be Dr. Tasha Williams. So um, you can find me on all of those platforms. And we will make sure that all of that's in the show notes. So no worries, including a link to your book when it is released, we'll have that updated. Thank you both for being with us this week and being on the podcast. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for having me as well. Thank you.